Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. Jordan here with a new video. Today I'm bringing you my review of the Razer Basilisk Ultimate Wireless Gaming Mouse. Now this mouse has got a ton of features, so we're going to cover some of the main ones now, and then some of the smaller ones later on. Now the Basilisk Ultimate is using Razer's hyperspeed wireless technology with a very small USB adapter, but this adapter can also be used with the included charging base, giving you the connection and also charging all in one unit. Now Razer claim a battery life of 100 hours between charges, so it's unlikely that you're going to need to put it on that dock much anyway. The Basilisk Ultimate also has an optical sensor with a maximum sensitivity of 20,000 DPI, 5 onboard profiles, 14 customizable RGB zones, 11 programmable buttons and switches with a 70 million click life cycle. So those are the main features and I'll cover some of the others as we go throughout the video. So the mouse comes in Razer's premium box with a magnet flap. Upon opening this you'll see the mouse and dock front and centre and then more accessories underneath. Getting everything out of the box we've got a USB cable which is what Razer call their Speedflex cable. This is used for the dock but can also be plugged into the mouse for wired use. We also have an additional button that you can use as a sniper button, the dock itself, instructions and Razer stickers. So onto the mouse. Thankfully most of this mouse is matte black with only a few gloss parts to give it a little bit of contrast. Now although matte black can sometimes gather grease I've not found it to be something that happens with this one so I'm really thankful to see that. And as we see with most right handed gaming mice we've got a gradual curve that goes to the mouse to make it a little bit more ergonomic and take the strain off your wrist. On the left hand side we've got a nice RGB strip which of course can be customised in Razer Synapse. Two buttons that by default are back and forward but again these can be remapped in the Synapse software. A nice texture grip and then the optional sniper button. You simply insert the tab first and then it's held in with a nice little magnet. This gives you increased accuracy in the game by lowering the DPI for as long as it's held and it's most commonly used as a sniper button, hence the name, for when you're aiming down sight but you can also use this in other ways, maybe during editing when you're cutting down different clips just to lower the sensitivity to get a nice precise cut. On the right hand side of the mouse we'll find another RGB strip, be it a smaller one on this side as the majority of the time you're only going to see the left hand side anyway as it's a right handed mouse. Additionally we'll find more of the textured surface for grip and you'll find that your ring and pinky finger sit on this when you grip the mouse. On the top we've got an illuminated scroll wheel that's also got a left and right scroll. Now one unique thing about this mouse is you can actually adjust the resistance of that wheel and there's a dial on the bottom of the mouse that I'll show you in a minute. We've also got the buttons by default that adjust DPI, but like the rest of the mouse, it can also be remapped. Then moving further back, we've got the Razer logo, which again is illuminated and can be coloured and effect controlled. At the very front of the mouse, we've got a micro USB port, which can be used to use the mouse in wired mode, should you wish. Now one thing to be aware of, like most Razer products, this has a slim yet recessed connection, so it's unlikely that third party cables will fit. So that means you must resort to the one that Razer use. Now this is quite annoying and it's actually quite a common complaint that I've got with Razer products. If we move to the base of the mouse there are 5 PTFE feet for a smooth mouse movement, the dial to adjust the scroll wheel resistance and I'll give you a sound sample in a minute for those that are interested and then the 20,000 DPI sensor. Additionally we've got a power switch, connection button, connection point for the dock and then a small cover that reveals a small compartment to store your USB adapter. Now if we move on to the dock, this again has got a micro USB port on the front that you can swap between the dock or wired mode for the mouse. That being said, it's so easy to charge the mouse and it's unlikely you're going to need to use the wired mode that often anyway. But maybe occasionally if you take it to a friend's house or maybe at a LAN event. Now the dock's got RGB lighting which again can be changed in the Snap software and there's a USB port on the top which is intended for the USB adapter. This gives you the stronger connection as the receiver is close to you plus charging all in one device. As you can see the dock's got two pins that the mouse makes contact with and underneath has got a nice sticky pad so it doesn't move when it's on your desk. The docking can be a little bit fiddly at times but it's certainly more convenient than connecting the cable each time and when the mouse is on the dock the mouse will illuminate the colour corresponding to the charging state so it goes between red for low, amber in the middle and then green for high. Now for those of you that would like to hear how the mouse sounds this bit's for you. Now I'd say this is more for medium handed people but if you have big hands like me and you simply have to have this mouse then it'll be fine so don't really worry. So now let's take a look at the Razer Snap software and what you can customise on the mouse. 
So this is the Razer Snap software and I'm going to go over this quite briefly just because there's so much and we could spend hours here if we wanted to. Here we can see the two items that are connected. These are the only ones that I've actually got plugged in at the moment. But if you have other ones, they'll show up here too for the Basilisk docking station. Here you can see the brightness by default is 33, but you can crank that up as well. But it is very, very bright, probably a little bit distracting if it's at full. So that's something you're obviously going to want to do to your own preference. We've got the adjustments here. There are some presets built in, or of course you can do a custom one if you want to. And this is where you can really get into the nitty gritty. So you can literally select a certain part and then do maybe you want an audio meter on that, but on your actual mouse, you want to do a breathing effect. You can do all that in there and then save. You can add layers and layers and stuff like that. This is a really comprehensive um, piece of software that Razer have made. And the same goes for macros you'll see in a minute. This is something you can spend hours on if you wanted to. But for now, we're going to just go back. So quick effects, for example, I've been using um, red and white. These are the ones that I use quite commonly. And you can actually press this button here, which will apply it to other Chroma devices that you've got connected to your PC. If you've got a keyboard or a headset or anything that you know can do Chroma, you can just press that and it'll put it on everything, which is really quite nice and convenient. So if we go onto the actual mouse, this is where it gets, well, can get quite complicated. For the most part, it's pretty simple. But if you do want to spend some time and get it you know, really dialed in, this is where you do it. So for example, if you wanted to add a custom command on one of these buttons, we'll go to the macro tab along the top. And then we'll just press plus on the left hand side. And then you can start recording the custom macro. So whatever you press from now until you press stop will be counted. So even keyboard commands, clicks, you can see I'm doing whole different things there and it's all coming up on the Synapse software. Pressing stop, obviously it won't count the stop. And then it's also got timings in there as well. Once you've got that all sorted, then you can go in and then go say, you wanna go down to macros and then you wanna save the macro that we've just done, play it just once and then click save. And now that's our custom macro on there. So if I was to press that, all of those spammy buttons that I just pressed will happen very, very quickly. So that's how you go and you know, make your own custom macros. This would be really good for video editing as well. If you're someone that uses a lot of macros in there, this is where this would all be very helpful as well. And of course, MMOs and RPG games and stuff like that. Now, if I click on this little like SD card at the top here, this will show the onboard memory profile. So for example, the ones we've got here, we can or obviously save at the top, but if you want to make another profile, you can then have that there as well. So if you go to a friend's house, you can swap over to a different profile. So you've got lots of different configurations that you can set up there. Additionally, let's go to lighting. Obviously you've got the same kind of effects that we saw with the dock. Then you also have the options to turn off the lighting when the display's off. You can do calibration as well if you want to do this manually or if you want to do it smart tracking. I found that it was fine straight out of the box, but that might be something you have to do depending on the kind of surface that you're using. You've got power options on there as well. And then performance where you're going to set your DPI and, and by default, as I showed you, the DPI settings will adjust these, but you can make these custom if you want to. Now, if you want to adjust the sniper button, that's the sensitivity clutch. And if you go down to sensitivity here, it's currently 800 and then normally I'll be using 1800. So that's obviously a nice slowdown for when you want to get some precise um, shots through a sniper. So we've had a good look around the features and the software. Now let's give you some thoughts. Now, as you've probably guessed by the massive list of features, this is one of Razer's high-end offerings, and that does give it a price premium. It's currently selling at £149 or $139, giving it the title of the most expensive mouse I've reviewed to date. However, Razer also offer the Basilisk Hyperspeed and the Basilisk Wired, which are a bit more stripped back if you don't want to spend quite so much. So first of all, let's cover the main aspect, gaming performance. I've been using this with a range of games and I've been thoroughly enjoying the experience. The mouse genuinely feels like it has the responsiveness of the wired mouse being it wired free. The hyperspeed technology has really bridged the gap between previous generations of wireless mice where they work well but you just can't help feeling that wired mice still have the advantage and I'd have no hesitation of using this mouse for serious gaming sessions. It's super responsive and precise and I've not had any instances of stuttering, jumping or lag. I'm really impressed. One thing that I didn't see myself using or getting used to was the sniper button, but I actually found that to be very useful. In games such as Hell Let Loose, it really helps the precision, but you kind of expect that being it's called a sniper button. Getting used to the position was a little bit tricky at first, as I usually grip the mouse a bit further down, 
but after about half an hour or so, it soon becomes second nature. In terms of customizability, Razer is always one of the companies at the forefront of that, so everything is as expected here, and with 11 programmable buttons, there's enough flexibility for most people, not to mention loads of options for lighting too. The charging dock I really like, although I do find it a little bit fiddly to get a dock sometimes. It's so simple to just slide on after a day of gaming or general use, and if you do it after every use, then you're really not going to have to worry about it running out of power. Now that being said, Razer claim 100 hours of battery life, so you could just dock it once a week at that rate. Now I also love that the dock takes the adapter, giving you a better connectivity to the, to the mouse as it's only a few inches away rather than the feet, but it also saves you a USB port as you get charging and connection all in one unit. Now the only downside that I can find, and trust me I've looked, is the end of the USB cable. It's braided which is nice, but the end is so narrow plus the micro USB port on the dock just gives you no choice but to use Razer's cable, which is a little bit annoying. The only way around it is if you're willing to shave a cable down and play a game of fine the hole. Make out your own jokes. All in all, this is a quality product from Razer, feature packed like the Lamborghini of the mouse world, and at $140 or £150, it's certainly a fair comparison that matches up. Don't forget there are cheaper alternatives should you not want to splash the cash, and I'll leave the links to all of those in the video description. And as always, if there's anything else that you'd like to know, please leave a comment and I will get back to you. If you enjoyed this video, then please subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss a video. Thank you all for watching. A big thank you to Razor for sending this out for me to review, and I'll see you all in the next one.